Hello everyone and welcome back to Edu Search Clinics. I am Dr. Gunjan Desai and today we are going to continue our discussion on pancreatic cystic lesions and we are going to see some common cystic lesions. So we have seen the basics, the origin of the cysts and the histology and we have seen the classification, the morphological terms that are commonly used. Today we are going to discuss two commonly seen pancreatic cystic neoplasm, this is a cystic neoplasm and Spen. In the upcoming talks, then we will discuss on mucinous neoplasms and the guidelines and algorithms. So we have already seen this slide. Serous cystic neoplasm is a microcystic adenoma. That is a cyst which is less than one centimeter and multiple cysts of that type. And it has a honeycomb appearance, which is a commonly asked question. So when we talk of pancreatic cystic lesions in general, 15% of pancreatic neoplasms are cystic, whereas 15% of pancreatic cystic lesions are neoplastic. Now, these are commonly asked questions. So just summarizing them here, 15% of true pancreatic cystic lesions and 85% are pseudocysts. So when we talk of pancreatic cystic lesions and not neoplasms, most common is pseudocyst, that is 85% and 15% are true pancreatic cyst. Out of them, 15% are neoplastic and 15% of all tumors of pancreas are cystic. Read this three, four times. A lot of questions are asked from these three lines. Incidence of cystic lesions increases with age. In 1978, Compagno and Ortel gave serous and mucinous as a classification. Then in 1982, Ohashi termed IPMN. Then WHO said that MCN and IPMN are separate entities. And in 1997, it was discovered or it was found that mucinous cystic neoplasm has ovarian stroma, which distinguishes it from IPMN. So WHO in 96 and 97, the Armed Forces Institutes of Pathology. Then they started the classifications, the Clopel classification based on cell of origin and the WHO classification based on malignant potential. So a lot of questions on this slide. Now, whenever we discuss cystic lesions of pancreas, the important points that you need to remember for all of them one is the classification and we have already seen that. The second is the clinical presentation. Then you look at the imaging characteristics. We have seen some points like microcystic, multilocular and so on. Then you look at the cyst fluid analysis, cyst wall biopsy, which is endoscopic ultrasound based currently. And if it is required for a particular cystic lesion or not, and if it's required, then what are the findings? Then you will come to know the treatment plan. So keep all these points in mind when we discuss the common cystic neoplasms. The first of them is serous cystic neoplasm. It is also known as grandmother tumor because it's common in elderly females that is 60 to 70 years of age. Female is to male ratio is 7 is to 3. More common in head or uncinate process of pancreas, that is a serous cystic neoplasm. Cell of origin is the centroacinar cell, very commonly asked question. So the epithelial lining will be squamous. When we talk of types of serous cystic neoplasm, the most common type, up to 70% of cases are microcystic. The classical honeycomb appearance is seen in 20% of cases. More than 6 cysts, less than 1 cm in size. When we talk of oligocystic or macrocystic or multilocular cysts, then it is more common in males and this is less than 2% of cases of serous cystic neoplasm. Another type of SCN is a VHL associated SCN that is a chromosome 3 syndrome and this predisposes to neuroendocrine neoplasm and multifocality. So that is also an important type to remember. So microcystic which is the classical SCN, then you have oligocystic which is more common in males 
and then you have VHL associated SCL which predisposes to neuroendocrine neoplasm and multifocality. Cirrhocystic neoplasms are benign. It has no ductal communication, no mucin, no mural nodule. So though all our M's are not there, incidence of malignancy is actually non-existent but WHO still considers the incidence is less than 1% and divides it into serous cystic adenoma or serous cystic neoplasm and serous cystic adenocarcinoma. One of the images of a serous cystic neoplasm here in the body and tail of pancreas, the tumor size can be large, 1 to 25 centimeters in size. We need to rule out vascular involvement and involvement of adjacent organs in the scan. And plan surgery on console. This patient underwent a distal pancreatectomy, which was spleen preserving. When we come to clinical presentation, most of them are asymptomatic, and that is why they are very large masses at presentation. The large mass can lead to pain, abdomen, or obstructive symptoms. We saw the imaging pattern on the CT. Just to summarize the imaging findings on different modalities. It is hypoechoic on ultrasound, low attenuation on CT and T2 hyperintense on MRI because of the fluid content. The central stellate calcification gives rise to a sunburns appearance which is commonly asked question. This is a pathognomonic pattern of cirrhocystic neoplasm but it is seen in only 30% of cases. If a cyst fluid analysis or wall biopsy is done, though this is classically not recommended if the lesion is very clearly identified on imaging. But if it is done, there is no mucin stain, no amylase, low CEA, it is not viscous. They, it will have squamous or cuboidal cells with no mucin and glycogen rich cytoplasm. We will see cyst fluid analysis in detail in a separate video. For serous cystic neoplasm types, microcystic adenoma, most of them can be observed. Surgery is reserved for symptomatic patients or when there is diagnostic uncertainty in cases of macrocystic or multilocular neoplasms or VHL associated serous cystic neoplasm. Yearly follow up is good enough for surveillance and we will see how the guidelines discuss surveillance and surgery for these cystic neoplasm. Now going to spen or daughter tumor. Remember the serous cystic neoplasm was grandmother tumor. Spen is a daughter tumor and it is also known as Franz tumor, Hamaudi tumor or papillary cystic neoplasm. It has borderline malignant potential. This is suggested by lymphovascular invasion, multifocality, and it can have metastases which are common to liver, mesentery, and peritoneum. It is known as daughter tumor because it is very common in females in the second decade. 80% are symptomatic and the most common symptom is abdominal pain. It is more common in pancreatic. Daily 20% of them have metastases at presentation. Imaging wise, it is a mixed solicystic lesion with peripheral enhancement and variable calcification. The cysts in the span are due to cystic degeneration which can be secondary to necrosis or hemorrhage. Immunohistochemistry of the slides will show diffuse nuclear staining of beta catenin. This is due to somatic mutation in CTN and B1. Treatment is complete surgical excision and debulking. If you have achieved a complete rejection from pancreatic point of view, then a liver transplant for liver metastasis has been suggested in recent cases as these patients are young and overall spend has a low malignant potential, but it is aggressive when it is present. So that is why liver transplant becomes an option. Prognosis is excellent despite metastasis if we achieve a R0 rejection. So that is regarding serous cystic neoplasm and SPEN. Why we have discussed these two first? Because the mucinous ones need more planning and more management options. So we will review the cyst fluid analysis and imaging characteristics separately. This series has been designed in a way that you understand the pancreatic cystic lesions very practically and you don't get confused with 
the 10 12 guidelines that are already existent for managing these lesions this is our website you can look at the videos if you have missed in the past and the recommended books you can leave testimonials on the website and have a look at our faculties also and the publications of our faculties thank you